guest calling in, uh, U.S. Congressman Derek Kilmer, representing the 6th District here in Washington. Derek, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I surely can. Thank you so much for uh, calling in this morning and uh, welcome you into 2019. I mean, first Thanks. things Happy first, we got what's going on with the uh, shutdown. I know you're right there in the middle of all the action. Has there been any continued movement over the weekend? Well, uh, uh, I think we'll see is the short answer. Uh, up front, I think government shutdowns are a really bad idea. Uh, unfortunately, it has a huge impact, not just on federal workers, uh, but on local economies. When when the national park for example is impacted i was just talking with someone up in port angeles and they're starting to see you know hotel and bed and breakfast cancellations and rest local restaurants are feeling uh the impact of it uh all across the board you know when when uh if this shutdown continues it means that irs refunds are impacted by that people getting their tax uh, returns uh, completed. All of these sorts of things have an impact not just to the federal workforce, but to our economy as well. So uh, the, the, the good news is last week the House passed uh, a bill to reopen the government, and it's a bill that just a few weeks ago had near unanimous support out of the United States Senate. So my hope is that the Senate will take that up this week, the House is going to break that bill up into the individual bills. So, for example, there will be a bill uh, to address the IRS, the IRS so that tax refunds can go out. Uh, there will be a bill that's focused on uh, interior, the Department of Interior, which will include reopening the national parks. All of these sorts of things will, um, and all of these things had broad bipartisan support just a few weeks ago. So we'll see what happens from there. Seems like uh, not only are the uh, regular rank and file of the uh, federal workers, but also there is uh, quite a large number of government contractors that are without uh, jobs now, too. Is that a big impact up kind of around Bremerton and the shipyards? Well, because the Department of Defense was already funded for the entire year, there's less of an impact to defense contractors, but there's absolutely an impact for those who do business with other uh, agencies within the government. Um, so listen, this is, this is a real uh, concern, and unfortunately it has been wrapped up into uh, a broader conversation around immigration policy. I, I'm fine with Congress and the president having a debate and a discussion about immigration policy. But I think that debate and discussion is best happened with the government open, not closed. I mean, I, I, as you know, I came out of the business world. You know, when a management team has a disagreement about an issue in business, they don't say, well, let's just shut down the business for a half a month until we work that out. They keep the business open and then work out the disagreement. And unfortunately, that's not what we are seeing happening in our nation's capital. And I think that should change. Derek, we got a new co-host here on the Daybreak Show, Spencer Hughes. When I introduce you to him, he's got a question for you. Congressman, uh, nice to meet you here. Uh, what's the latest update on the TSA and how it's being affected? I know I dropped my son off uh, at SeaTac on Saturday, and I was surprised at how smoothly things went for him at security. But I'm hearing a lot of stories about the TSA and a lot of uh, unhappy workers there. Many uh, record numbers calling in sick during this time. Any updates on the TSA and how it's being affected by the shutdown? Uh, for sure. You know, right now there are hundreds of, of TSA officers who are required to go to work but who aren't getting a paycheck. And that's a consequence of this partial government shutdown. And we're seeing, you know, sorry, we're seeing thousands of them. We're seeing hundreds of them uh, um, have called out from work. Um, and particularly we've seen that at, at four major airports around the country where you've seen just mass call out that's a real concern because that could you know that could not just lead to delays but it could make our air travel less secure this is again why I, I i believe very strongly that this government shutdown needs to end this is no way to run a railroad and uh obviously they, there's concern around air travel but other areas, too, the, the shutdown undermines the Coast Guard's effort to do everything from marine licensing to boat safety checks to, 
you know, to, to basic patrols. Uh, I mentioned the national parks. Um, the district I represent has 11 Native American tribes. We are seeing an impact to, to Native American tribes in terms of federal money that's simply not arriving to things like health clinics um, and those sorts of resources. So, again, this is this is not a costless exercise. That's, I think, what's um, disheartening to a lot of Americans. And this could get worse. This, the shutdown is already de- delaying uh IRS preparations for the tax filing season, and if the shutdown lasts beyond January, more than $140 billion in tax refunds could be frozen or delayed, and that's a real that's a real concern because that really starts to get at the impact to our community and to the local economy. If we're uh, when we're able to get everything back up and running, uh, regular business uh, will be uh, the course of the day you've been named uh, select chair committee of the modernization of congress uh, tell us a little bit about what that means to uh, the average citizen well I, I i think we've talked before about the fact that congress is really a fixer-upper um and you're seeing that play out now you're seeing that in terms of every time a bill is written behind closed doors or passed without debate the public justifiably loses faith in in Congress. And every 20 to 25 years or so, there's been an effort in a real structural way to try to reform and modernize the Congress. There's been an acknowledgement that like any other functional organization, every now and then, you got to diagnose what's working and what isn't and how to make things better. And that's what this committee will be about. It was created um, as, uh, last week, actually on Friday, uh, there was a vote that created this committee, and uh, and it was um, uh, passed with your near unanimous support to to set up this committee. And it will be an opportunity to look for ways to make Congress just work better and be more responsive to the American people. And soon after the bill was passed to create it, uh, I was named as chair of it. And I'm excited about that. Uh, I've really focused a lot as, as the representative from this area on just trying to make government work better. I mean, I, it's probably the most common question I get is, dear God, why would you want to be in Congress right now when it's such a mess? And my response is, because it's such a mess, I want to I want to make sure we fix it. And this will be a good opportunity for me, for me to have some impact in that regard. U.S. Congressman Derek Kilmer, we got a lot more to talk about, but we'll let you go this time. We'll get you back in here uh, before too long talking about some of the other bills that you're looking likely to get through the 116th Congress. But representing the 6th District here in the great state of Washington, Derek Kilmer. Thank you, Derek. Always nice talking with you. You too. Thanks, you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you.